As President Trump brags about his handling of the hurricane in Puerto Rico, it's becoming clearer than ever that there are no adults around Trump to control his worst impulses. For more on this, it's time for a closer look. One of the many jobs a president has is to reassure people that the government can handle a crisis. Trump, of course, is incapable of that. As he demonstrated yesterday, when after a briefing on preparations for Hurricane Florence, he said this. I've received a briefing from Secretary Nielsen, Administrator Long, and my senior staff regarding Hurricane Florence. They haven't seen anything like what's coming at us in uh, 25, 30 years, maybe ever. It's tremendously big and tremendously wet. Tremendously big and tremendously wet. A deadly storm is bearing down on our coast, and you're making it sound like a fancy British water park. <laughs> tremendously big and tremendously wet. You'll have a splashing good time. <laughs> My favorite thing about that clip is that he literally has two charts full of information right next to him. All he had to do was look left or right, but instead he decided to ramble off the top of his head like a fifth grader who just saw a mall fountain. It was tremendously big and tremendously wet, and I threw a quarter in and wished that I wasn't president anymore. <laughs> with a massive, with a massive hurricane bearing down on millions of people, it's as important as ever to have a competent government, and yet we have a president who is not only dangerously incompetent, but proud of his incompetence. Yesterday, for example, he called his response to the hurricane in Puerto Rico an unsung success, and today doubled down on that. Here's what the president just posted. He says, uh, we got A-pluses for our recent hurricane work in Texas and Florida and did an unappreciated great job in Puerto Rico, even though an inaccessible island with very poor electricity and a totally incompetent mayor of San Juan. We are ready for the big one that is coming. First of all, Puerto Rico is not an inaccessible island. They have a Ritz-Carlton, and JetBlue has a flight there every half hour. <laughs> You're talking about it like it's Skull Island. It's impossible to help them because their electrical grid is constantly being torn up by Kong. <laughs> Second, it's not reassuring when the president talks about a potentially devastating storm like he's Fred Sanford. Oh, it's the worst one. This is a big one. Seriously. You're calling a humanitarian disaster that left thousands of American citizens dead an unappreciated success while attacking the people who actually tried to do something about it. Not only is our president a callous, incompetent moron, he's also an ass. An ass that's... Tremendously big and tremendously wet. Now... Trump's ability... Trump's ability to reassure the public during a crisis has also been made more difficult by famed journalist Bob Woodward's new book, Fear, an insider account of the turmoil in Trump's White House. The quotes in the Woodward book are just the latest in a parade of anonymous Trump officials who have come forward to warn the country that the president is dangerously unfit for office. And in response, Trump has been going on TV to convince people that he's not. In recent events, for example, he's been carrying around a printed out list of what he claims are his accomplishments. A article was just printed, just came out a few minutes ago. Trump breaks the record for budget gridlock wins, scores big win. Point after point after point, if you look. We've never had a period, even if you look at the Olympics, got the Olympics, the uh, World Cup, just got, you just saw them, they were in my office, got the World Cup. I have a list, and the list goes on and on. It's four pages of things that the Trump administration has accomplished. And if I read it to you, look at this, this is, if I read, each dot is a thing, okay? <laughs> and some of those things are very big things. Oh, yeah, yeah. He, he definitely just described it the way it was described to him. <laughs> Mr. President, we have a list for you. What the hell is that? I'm not going to read that. Well, you don't have to read it. Just know that um, each dot is a thing. <laughs> and some of those things are very big things. Oh, cool, cool. Cool. I'm gonna keep this then. Well, apparently, actual voters haven't had a chance to read the dots that are things yet, because according to a slew of new polls that have come out in the past week, Trump's approval ratings are taking a nosedive just as the fall campaign season gets underway.
The Senate's new poll has some really bad news for President Trump. Only 36 percent of Americans approve of his handling of his job. Eight high quality polls have been completed in the past two weeks, and every single one of them, look at this, has Trump's appro approval rating falling. President Trump has the lowest approval rating heading into his first midterm election of any president since 1954. That's right. Trump's approval rating is plummeting. Mr. President, let me explain it to you this way. Each dot is a thing. <laughs> Some of this is a bad thing. Now, maybe voters are getting tired of hearing the argument from pundits and Republicans that Trump's erratic behavior is tolerable because there are so-called adults in the room who can control his worst impulses. It's a line we've heard repeatedly, including in that infamous New York Times op-ed. The official writes, it may be cold comfort in this chaotic era, but Americans should know that there are adults in the room. I do think that the motivation was probably to try to convince voters, reassure voters for the upcoming midterm elections that there are adults in the room. You have all these people around the president constantly over the last year or so doing things on their own to try to stop President Trump. I would hope the staff over there would figure out ways of controlling him. He's the president. You shouldn't have to control him. You're talking about him like he just escaped from Skull Island. <laughs> He's about to tweet something. Quick, shoot him with a tranquilizer dart. <laughs> so that's been the line for two years. Responsible people around Trump are helping him make good decisions, especially on issues like foreign policy and the military. People like GOP Senator Lindsey Graham. Graham was once considered an establishment Republican who would rein Trump in, which is why Republicans were heartened to see him developing a rapport with the president. According to Woodward's book, early in Trump's presidency, Trump invited Graham to lunch at the White House. When he walked into the Oval Office, Trump was sitting behind the Resolute desk. He jumped up, moved swiftly toward Graham, and gave him a big hug. We've got to be friends, Trump said. You're going to be my friend. <laughs> yes, sir, Graham replied. I want to be your friend. <laughs> oh, my God. Insider accounts of this White House read like an episode of Dora the Explorer. <laughs> yeah. You're going to be my friend. Okay, I'll be your friend. Come on, Vamanos. Everybody, let's go. <laughs> Apparently, that friendship has blossomed. In fact, when Trump called Woodward last month to complain that Woodward hadn't interviewed him for his book, Woodward explained on the call, which he recorded, that he tried to get through to Trump by talking to Graham. I certainly don't mind talking to you, and I wish I could have spoken to you. Well, uh, it's, it's, but you know, you, but nobody called my office. I mean, you went through, well, what, I guess, I mean, different I, people. Mr. President, how can I spend all this time talking to uh, people and uh, like Kellyanne and Raj and Republican senators? I mean, uh, who are the senators? No, they never called me like, about it. Uh, Senator Graham said he had talked to you about talking to me. Now, is that not true? Uh, Senator Graham actually mentioned it quickly on yeah, one meeting. Right. And, we'll you know, that, that, that is true. And that is true. I love how easy it is to checkmate Trump. <laughs> Takes, like, two moves tops. Can you imagine if I ever sat down with Robert Mueller? I didn't collude, but you did. No, that's true. That's true. <laughs> yeah. Now that you mention it. Yeah. Yeah, I did. <laughs> so there you go. No one in Congress is closer to Trump than Lindsey Graham, which is why it was terrifying to read in Woodward's book that Graham once pitched Trump on a bad crazy scheme to assassinate North Korean leader Kim Jong-un. Woodward reports that Graham tried to solve the Trump administration's biggest foreign policy dilemma by advocating a plan to murder Kim Jong-un and turn North Korea into a Chinese colony. Graham argued China needs to kill him and replace him with the North Korean general they control. They need to take him out. That's insane. Lindsey Graham wanted Trump to get the Chinese government to assassinate Kim Jong-un. That sounds like the plot of a Jack Ryan novel called Jack Tryin' to get us all killed. <laughs> In fact, this isn't even the first time Graham has tried to convince Trump to kill a foreign leader. He also urged Trump to kill Syrian dictator Bashar al-Assad, advice Trump apparently agreed with. According to Woodward, Trump called Secretary of Defense James Mattis in 2017 and pitched the idea. Trump told Mattis, let's kill him, let's go in, let's kill the lot of them. Mattis told the president that he would get right on it, but after hanging up the phone, he told a senior aide, we're not going to do any of that. <laughs> oh my God, that is how I talk to my grandpa. <laughs> What's that, grandpa? You want me to come to Florida and set up an Instagram account so you can look at teenagers in bikinis? Yeah, no, I, uh, yeah, I'm definitely going to do that. I'll see you next week. Yeah, I'm not doing any of that. <laughs> the lesson of all this 
is that there are no adults in the room, and even if there were, there's nothing they could do. The problem begins and ends with Trump and the Republicans supporting him. They are actively collaborating with Trump, despite the fact that his brain is... Tremendously wet. This has been A Closer Look.